I'm really glad for your attendance, honestly. Uh, Dr. Mubarak, thank you so much for the great opportunity. And I'm really grateful to share my experience with you guys. So, uh, long day, huh? So what do we get from the previous presentations? That uh, if you get a patient with a little open margin, if you get a patient that does not floss gre uh, greatly, if your kid does not clean their teeth greatly, all what you need to do is to go to Excite and buy Sonic Care, right? <laughs> <laughs> right, Mark. <laughs> Do you have any of your videos in my presentation? No? <laughs> okay, so let's start with this video and then we'll continue our presentation. لكي لا يفقد عقله في هذا السجن المظلم وبعد إنقاذه من الأسر لأسبوع واحد فقط شارك في المسابقة عالمية للغولف وفاز بمرتبة متقدمة جدا كان أينشتاين يقول إن القدرة على التخيل أهم بكثير من المعرفة لهذا نجد أن الأشخاص الذين يستطيعون تغذية عقولهم دائما بالصور والأفكار الإيجابية يحققون من النجاحات والإنجازات ما لا يستطيع أن يحققه من يستسلم واقع سلبي ويقضي معظم وقته وهو يفكر في السلبيات في كتاب ميزة السعادة يصحح الكاتب خطأ الاعتقاد التقليدي فإن الإنسان يعمل ويثابر ويجتهد من أجل إنجاز يشعره بالسعادة ليبين لنا أن المعادلة الصحيحة مقلوبة وذلك ما أكلته دراسة الكتاب الرئيسية في هارفارد وأكثر من 200 دراسة علمية مساندة حول العالم على ما يفوق 270 ألف شخص بمعنى آخر عندما نكون سعداء وإيجابيين فإننا نبحث عن الصور الإيجابية من حولنا ونغذي الدماغ بهذه الصور الدماغ يستقبلها كأنها حقيقة ما يؤدي إلى مضاعفة إفراز هرمون الدوبامين الذي يقوم بوظيفتين يجعلنا أكثر سعادة مما يؤدي إلى أننا نكون أكثر نشاط وحيوية وطاقة وكذلك يجعلنا أكثر ذكاء وأكثر قدرة على رؤية الفرص وقت ناصحة So, winners just win No matter what the circumstances are This is guys not a positive thinking it's they have everything planned in their mind with every single details and they make sure it gets repeated over and over again before it actually happens do you guys know that 80 percent of what we become comes from your mind only 20 percent from the environment so don't tell me you can't definitely you can i remember I started my private sector in 2012 and then my production was increasing year after year. At the end of every year we sit with the management and talk about all the things that happened in the, um, uh, in the previous year. All the good things, the bad things and how can we improve in the upcoming years. In 2015 my production dropped and I had the same meeting with them. And we went over the same points that we go over every single year. And one of their questions was, what's your plan for your future? What do you want to be? So my answer was, I want to be famous. Maybe you guys would think, why did he say it now? Why he didn't say it in his previous meetings? This is not the right time, this is not the right year. No, this is my goal, as we said, regardless of the situation. This is what's in my mind. So set your goal in your mind before it actually happens. So, success. 
Success is a beautiful word. It is so subjective that it can differ easily from one person to another. So what is success to you might but not be enough for the person who's sitting next to you, might be more than enough for the person who's sitting behind you, might not even interest the person who's sitting in front of you. If you try to Google such a word, you will find a lot of meanings, a lot of explanations, because it's very powerful, powerful word. I believe success is excelling at everything. You guys coming to the presentation is success. Thank you for that. Me delivering a clear message is success. Getting your patient on time is success. Delivering a proper treatment is success. Changing their life is success. But for every success, there has to be a recipe. There has to be ingredients. And that's what define your success and make it different than the other people. So this is what I'm gonna do today. I'm just gonna share with you guys my ingredients, my recipe. You guys don't need to agree with me. Maybe you can agree with some points, but this will give you an idea that success, it just, it's not a coincidence. You just have to plan for it and it's gonna happen. The first and the most important factor is you, us. How can we become the perfect dentist? There are many factors, but I think the most two important factors are passion and consistency. You gotta love your job. You get to love the job that you're gonna do for the rest of your life. Fuad Bushehri, I love his words. من مقولات الجميلة صراحة قال إن السعادة أن يكون عملك هوايتك تخيلوا if your work is your hobby definitely your hobby this is something you love doing imagine if it's your work you can do it perfectly for the rest of your life believe me the second thing is loving what you're working at Ask yourself this question, can you see yourself in this place working for the rest of your life? If your answer is no, you better change your place. You better change the environment. Do you guys know that studies have shown that increasing your workers' loyalty by 6% will increase your company's production by 60%? And you gotta love the place to be loyal. So, Passion is something you gotta have to be perfect. Then comes the consistency. You have to be consistent. You have to be able to give your patient the same quality and the same surface every time they come to you because that's what they expect. When they refer patients to you, that's what they expect you're gonna provide for their friends or their family. If you think to, about a restaurant that you want to go back to, you're just remembering the experience that you had there and you expect that restaurant to give you the same quality and the same experience. Otherwise, you're not going to go again. That's called consistency. You have to be consistent. People, patients are very smart. They know it. One time you get in, to, to your patients, not with the same amount of a smile that you had in the previous appointments. They know it, they feel it, they will tell you about it. So you have to be consistent. The second most important ingredient is quality. Quality is the core of everything. This is what's gonna make you or break you. This is what's gonna bring you your patience after 10 years this is what's going to make your patients refer another patient to you after 10 years. This is what you studied in school. This is what 1 plus 1 equals 2. This is talking to your patient's mind, convincing them scientifically that what you're saying is right. 
Dr. Ahmed Al Awadi was talking about quality. This is something you have to give always perfectly. The third in my ingredient is customer service or customer experience. It's talking to your patient's heart. It's what's gonna make your patients fight for your name when his family or her family or her friends talk about dentistry and dentist. They will always say that you are the best because they love you. This is, comes after a great customer service or experience. And you guys know what? If you ever do a mistake, and we all do mistakes when it comes to quality, if you provide them with a good customer service, they will forgive you because they love you. Studies have shown that most of us, when we do an evaluation either in a restaurant or for any company, we do not give more than 95%, even if we're happy. But an unhappy patient turned into a happy patient can give you 100%. So make sure that your patients leave your clinic happy. Focus on that. That was the issue that I had the end of 2015. I was focusing only on giving patients a beautiful smile. I never asked them about their journey. Did they like their, their appointments? Did they have any problems? So customer service is a very important factor that you guys should focus on. Now, is there a difference between customer service and customer experience? There is, and it's actually very difficult to explain. But I'll tell you a story. Imagine you have your favorite airline and you, you booked your, your, your flight and you're expecting the same consistency by this airline and all of a sudden you are in the airport and your airline told you that this flight has been cancelled for some reason. They're going to give you the best accommodation, best food ever until the day after and then you will get the other fly to your destination. So if I ask you to evaluate that incident, the cancellation of the flight and how the company dealt with such an issue, you're going to give them a 10 out of 10 because you are evaluating their surface. But when you, you reach your final destination and I come to you and I ask you, how was your trip? You will tell me, well, the flight was canceled. I had to spend another day in the airport. I'm tired. I had some commitment that I have to cancel. So I would, good, I would give the whole experience six out of 10. That's a customer experience. I think the best companies who can provide a customer service that meet the customer experience. Now the question that I have for you guys, which one you think is more important? Quality or customer service? I'll give you two scenarios. A patient comes to you and you give him a decent, up to the standard treatment with an unforgettable experience compared to another patient where you gave him the best treatment ever with a very bad experience. Who you would think would refer a patient to you? Both. Both. Yeah, let's, let's, yeah. Osama, tell me. Tell me, Osama. <laughs> tell me. Both? You think Both, quality yeah. and customer? I think quality is different than customer experience. Okay. okay. If you think that I get uh, a really, really good quality, okay, mm. I will tell you, Ali, go mm. to Dr. Osama. Mm. He's giving the best quality ever. Mm. But please don't expect his, uh, his uh, assistants or, or uh, receptionists, wherever, wherever, to give really. They always forget to remind you the appointments, whatever, whatever. Okay. 
Sometimes it happens, okay. You go to Agbit Perfect, the uh, uh, Jumeirah Beach Hotel, mm -hmm. okay, uh, but as a dental practice, okay, super, okay. But the dentist aren't uh, the total quality mm -hmm. for just lack of experience or anything. You'll still, they are okay, but not as good as, as you, okay. But they still will have customers just because they place is very fancy, uh, the service uh, is up to standard, very great standard. So I would tell that that place is really good, but this place is really good too. Mm -hmm. So this is my idea. Thank you. Thank you, Sam. Okay. Um, anybody would like to share? What do you guys think? Yeah? Sure. Um, I guess uh, the patient who had a nice treatment or the quality of treatment, the, as a patient or as a layman, they, they cannot uh, rate the quality of work that much. If it's a dentist, the patient was a dentist, maybe they can uh, judge the quality. Otherwise, as a layman, as a user person, it's always the customer care. Okay, great. Thank you very much. Thank you. Now, let me ask you guys a question. Why do we pick Qatar Airways or Emirates Airways? I think most of us like those two airlines the most. Why? Is it the customer service or the quality? Now, we said we're not talking about bad quality. A healthy, acceptable, up to the standard of healthcare quality. That kind of treatment I'm talking about. Why do we pick such airlines? I think the customer service. Do you guys even know the type of engines in those planes? Do you even care? I don't think you care. You just want to make sure they're, they're safe. But what you care about is, do they give pajamas on, on, on board? True. What kind of food they're providing? Qatar Airways provide ladre dessert. Um, Emirates Airlines, they know exactly what drinks you had in your previous flight and they make sure they provide you with the same drinks. I think both are important, that's my, my, what I believe, but customer service to an extent is a little bit more important because Customer service is what's going to bring you patience now. Quality is what's going to bring you patience after 10 years. Customer service is what's going to give you loyalty, is what's going to give you love. Because customer service, it's dealing with the patient's heart, with the patient's feeling. And that's very important. The fourth, and I believe, it's very important. It's social media. Guys, you guys have to take advantage of it. Do you guys know how much it costs to post an ad in newspaper or TV? It's costly. But we have the social media now. Take advantage of it. It's cheap. You can do a sponsor ad for only $5. And a lot of people will, will see it. You want to have exposure? You have to have social media. I don't care if it's Snapchat, Instagram, Twitter. But you have to be on board. Why do you want to take the stairs to reach the top where you can use the elevator? I mean, quality and customer service definitely going to reach you the top. But with, customer, with, with social media, you're going to save time. So social media, you should really focus on it. Because it's going to give you a good exposure, good connectivity with the people, your fans, your potential patients, and your real patients. And then their feedback. Are my patients happy? How was their experience? What my fans think of me? All this will give you an idea of how 
and where you're heading and if you need to do any kind of adjustments. So social media is a big factor nowadays. I can play this. Okay. Here. Uh, this is from um, um, Spider-Man, the, the, the first version. I love this sentence. With a great power comes a great responsibility. So when you see more patients, when you start giving a specific type of a quality and customer service, people expect you to do the same in every single appointment and with less mistakes. So with a great power comes a great responsibility. There is something called in the marketing, negative marketing. Be careful. So when people start knowing you and know how special your work is and your service is, you're gonna be overwhelmed with patience. You wanna make sure that you don't go into negative marketing where when you have too many patients, this is gonna affect the quality and the service that you're given. So you, you have to maintain what you've been given to your patients. This is very important. Now, what do I think? What success is? When you get a patient flying over or driving for hours just to see you for your consultation, this is success. When you get a patient that comes to you and asks you about the treatments that they get done from another doctor in another clinic, that is success. When you get a patient doesn't mind paying off his loan for five or 10 years because they believe that you can change their life, that's success. When you get a doctor who wants to shadow you because he believes that you're providing a special kind of treatment, that is success.